Geography is a tough subject and it's not tough because of the complex lines it has got drawn all over it, but because of the people and emotions deeply imbibed and suppressed under these fine lines that often go unnoticed when the nations step up their arsenal to keep, uh, capture the maximum size of the map. One such man-made crisis is brewing over in nagorno karabakh region, a hotly contested region between Christian Armenia and Shia Muslim majority Azerbaijan. Here Azerbaijan is an actively supported country by Turkey, Iran and the protector of Islam in the world, Pakistan. The geostrategic location of nagorno karabakh is a God-given tragedy. As you can see for yourself in the map, how small landlocked mountainous region of nagorno karabakh with a population of hardly 150,000 is sandwiched between Christian Armenia and Shia majority Azerbaijan. Nagorno Karabakh as a disputed and contested territory between Armenia and Azerbaijan is not something unheard of or new. We can see similar kind of disputes that started off because of the wrong geographical interpretations but later turned into socio-political mess. Hong Kong, Tibet, Kashmir, Jerusalem, Crimea, Levant Basin, the list goes on. All these real estate disputes have one thing in common. They all were started off as wrong interpretation of geography and maps but later turned into a hotbed of socio-religious and ethnic conflicts that killed millions worldwide. One such dispute began in Nagorno-Karabakh. The story of Nagorno-Karabakh has been that of imperial conquest, ethnic violence, civil strife and mass uprisings. Nagorno-Karabakh has seen all empires, the Romans, the Ottomans, the Russians and the Soviets that came to this territory also known as the Transcaucasia or the South Caucasus. It is called South Caucasus because of the location to the south of Caucasus mountain range. These empires fought hard to establish their rule over the South Caucasus. When empires retreated or collapsed, the Nagorno-Karabakh region became largely populated by ethnic Armenians and was left within the borders of Azerbaijan, igniting a protracted conflict that's still raging. The roots of today's conflict go back to the time when South Caucasus was part of the Russian Empire. The Tsarist Russia took over the region in the early 19th century after the Russo-Persian Wars from Persian Empire, which had sovereignty over the region for centuries. Before the 1917 revolution, the Russian influence receded in the South Caucasus, which allowed the formation of an independent Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic and Karabakh became a part of this republic. But the federations crumbled under its own contradictions and then emerged into three separate republics Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia. Nagorno-Karabakh, which had been part of the Elizabeth Pole government of the Russian Empire, was incorporated into Azerbaijan by the Azeri authorities. This was also the time when the Ottomans were attacking the region, mainly targeting Armenian militias in an alliance with the Azerbaijan. When the Ottomans, in the face of defeat in the First World War, withdrew from the region, the British temporarily filled the vacuum. But just like the Ottomans, they too failed to calm the ethnic tensions between Armenian Christians and Azerbaijani Muslims in 1920. The war was disastrous, especially for the ethnic Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijani forces, after repealing an Armenian offensive, burned down parts of Nagorno-Karabakh's capital, Susha. When the war was raging, the Bolshevik revolutionaries took over Azerbaijan and Armenia. For the Revit Russians, it was an important victory in extending the Soviet rule to the territories of the former Russian Empire. Nagorno-Karabakh at that time was 90% Armenian. But the Soviet leaders, especially Joseph Stalin, decided to give Nagorno-Karabakh the status of an autonomous province to Azerbaijan despite huge protest from Armenia. One such explanation for this giveaway of Nagorno-Karabakh to Azerbaijan by Joseph Stalin was that since Azerbaijan was a regional ally of the Ottoman Empire during the World War I, Joseph Stalin did not want to give more reasons to Turkey to exploit ethnic tensions in the South Caucasus by giving Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. The Soviets also redrew the map between Azerbaijan and Armenia which left the Nagorno-Karabakh province within the boundaries of Azerbaijan. And as long as the Soviet Union remained strong, the region had been relatively peaceful. 
But with the Soviet power receding in the late 1980s, the ethnic frictions started resurfacing. In 1988, the Regional Assembly of Nagorno-Karabakh passed a resolution to cancel its autonomous status and join Armenia. Azerbaijan opposed this move, leading to violent clashes. When Azerbaijan and Armenia became independent countries after the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991, the tensions over Nagorno-Karabakh led to an open war. The ethnic Armenian rebels of Nagorno-Karabakh, backed by the Armenian government, fought Azerbaijan for years. And a full-scale war that broke out in 1992 killed an estimated 30,000 people. When a ceasefire was reached in 1994, the Armenian rebels had not only ensured their rule over what was the Nagorno-Karabakh province, they also tried to extend their control to the Armenian borders, re-establishing territorial continuity with Armenia. Despite the ceasefire, Armenia and Azerbaijan failed to reach a peaceful agreement. Azerbaijan continued to claim sovereignty over Nagorno-Karabakh, and the Armenia accused the Azeri forces of attacking ethnic Armenians. In July this year, violence erupted, which left some 16 people dead. Since then, the borders had remained tense. In the current spell of clashes, which broke out on September 27, dozens have been killed so far, and the number is still counting. The Azerbaijan, with direct support from Turkey and Pakistan, seems to be emboldened now. Nagorno-Karabakh is dependent on Armenia for security, and Armenia, in turn, is dependent on Russia which enjoys good relations with both Azerbaijan and Armenia. That's why Russia has been calling for a ceasefire. You know, Russia sells weapons to both these countries. But the seriousness of this conflict can be understood by the fact that this small conflict in small caucuses could trigger a world war. Sorry, this is a bit But seriously, this conflict has lots of stakeholders from both the sides as the whole of Islamic nations including Turkey is actively supporting Azerbaijan and the rest of the Christian countries supporting the Armenian cause including Kim Kardashian. But for now Azerbaijan and its backers in the Turkey seems to be in the mood to fight. And hey you might be wondering where is that bloody world police the United States the great uncle Sam. Well, under the Trump administration, the United States has taken a backseat on major international issues as compared to the previous presidents, particularly when it affects the Russian sphere of influence. Trump has consistently avoided statements that would irritate Vladimir Putin. US allies like the United Kingdom and Lithuania have recently tried to persuade the United States State Department to be more aggressive in its response to the suppression of protests in Belarus and the poisoning of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. But American response to these human rights conflicts is not worth for mention. You know, Putin scares the hell out of Trump as winter is coming for the Mad King, the Donald Trump. 